Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for attending uh, this evening's Board of Marina Parks and Forestry Commission. Uh, my name is Peter Mayer. I'm the vice chairperson of the Marina Parks and Forestry. Uh, the chair is Mike Fro. He's not here this evening, uh, so I will be uh, chairing the meeting. We'd like to uh, start out um, uh, calling the meeting to order. Um, there will be uh, a period of time. I just want to explain the process a little bit. Uh, there will be on the agenda a public input session that is limited to three minutes and it relates to matters not on the agenda. So if you are here to, uh, uh, to comment or, uh, um, or discuss or uh, uh, mention something relating to the matter on the agenda for the park, that is not subject to the three minute time limitation. So when I mention the public input, if you're here for the regular public hearing, you do not need to speak at that time. We'll call it later. I know that sometimes becomes confusing, so I wanted to make sure to explain that to everybody because uh, sometimes we don't know exactly when we want to stand up. So thank you very much for coming. Uh, um, again, we're calling the meeting to order and we're going to start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, the next item on the agenda is public input. If anybody is here to speak on matters unrelated to the hearing, uh, you are welcome to do so. The time limit is three minutes per individual. Okay, I don't see anybody uh, moving to the lectern to speak in the public input. Uh, therefore, uh, the next item on the agenda is minutes. Uh, the minutes from the February 4th, 2020 meeting, which have been distributed. There's a motion to approve and a second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. The third item on the agenda is a hearing. A hearing pursuant to a notice published by the city clerk is scheduled for this evening to give persons an opportunity to be heard relative to the proposed taking of dedicated park land located at South Business Drive and Menning Road. The purpose of the taking of the parkland is to create new parkland in the same subdivision. We'd like to start out with a short uh, presentation. Um, Joe? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So tonight is our second, uh, second hearing of three uh, per ordinance of the City Council. So in the back room, you'll notice we do have uh, several maps, the map of the location. Um, we have a preliminary plat. Uh, we have one um, with a topographical uh, showing, um, you know, showing the, the elevations of uh, the areas also. So um, next week will be the third public hearing. And then after that, that's when the, the, the Marina Parks and Forestry Board will make uh, the recommendation. Um, this is uh, tonight, the second hearing um, dealing with the, uh, the taking of a, a public park. This park along Menning Road has no name. Um, it's never been on a city map. It was basically became a park in 2008, um, basically as a place card holder for the future when this area was developed. We wanted, the city wanted to make sure that there would be public land available at that time. So um, the, the land at this time is very wooded and um, very um, 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 ranges in, in, in um, 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 the site levels are range over, well over 12 feet, um, a lot of trees on the property. And then the proposed land that we'd be receiving in, in place is 1.73 acres and that would be graded, seeded, 
uh, the services would run to it would be electrical, uh, sanitary, and um, so that's what we're talking about. Basically, talking about an exchange of land after the, if this was approved um, to be taken for for from park property. Uh, thank you, and I should have introduced uh, Joe Curlin. He's the superintendent of Parks and Forestry. Uh, so uh, that's Joe Curlin who just gave that short presentation. Now I'd like to call for a motion to open the hearing. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? If none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay. If anybody would like to speak, we would like you to come to the uh, to the microphone in the center of the room, state your name, address, and the municipality that you reside in. Hello, um, John Birkin, uh, 2646 Prairie Winds Court, Sheboygan, that would be town of Wilson. Um, my land basically abuts the property. Um, I wanna thank you first of all for making Sheboygan a really progressive, exciting place. We're really, really happy with our move here. We moved here 14 years ago, and we're really happy with, with what's going on in the city itself. So um, again, when the land was set aside as a protected green space, uh, we were delighted in the fact that the developer in the city of Sheboygan had the wisdom and vision to keep this green space as dedicated parkland. Now, since the transfer of this property, little has been done to enhance its purpose. So over the last 12 years or so, we anxiously, anxiously waited for the city to come forward with its plan. Now, I have always been prepared to offer my ideas concerning the future use of this green space, but unfortunately was not approached by the city nor Warner Homes, the developer, for my input. Um, since... I am a town of Wilson resident. I somewhat understand why my input was not requested. Um, now that I, the plan is in place to exchange 3.5 acres of mature woodland for 1.5 acres of basically monoculture, monocultured farmland, I would like to present to you my ideas as to how I feel that your city is being shortchanged here. So the first problem deals with codes. Um, the subdivision plot seeks to destroy a dedicated natural area, and in doing so, it's in direct conflict with the guidelines and principles of the Sheboygan City Code and the Sheboygan Sustainability Plan. It essentially violates the stated goal of Appendix C, Section 6.1A of the Subdivision Code, which says the Plan Commission its goal when approving a plot should be protecting, um, preserving all natural features that add value to the community, such as large, large groves of trees. Specifically, this plan destroys a unique woodland that was previously deeded to the city for long-term stewardship in exchange for a very much smaller green space that may feature nothing more than a generic playground. The second issue of concern relates, re, relates to section 6.1b of Appendix C. This requires the preservation of specimen trees when not within a plotted right of way or buildable area. It strikes me as challenging, challenging and costly both to the subdivider and to the city to find a way in which to comply with this section of the code, not to mention the high probability of collateral damage to the natural species during development. Wouldn't it make more sense to simply adjust the plot to preserve this area instead of trying to engineer lots and roadways and utilities in and around such a desirable stand of mature trees and unique natural features? And basically for four lots, because that's all they're going to put in is four lots. But to put those four lots in, they got to build a roadway. Now, another issue that comes before you is that this subdivision plot calls for a density that does not match the current 
context of the subdivisions to the north or to the south, it seems out of character with the ex-urban neighborhood at large. When looking at the design, the pr proposed dwelling units per acre seem much greater than the surrounding plots. Many of the lots here are gonna be quarter acre lots. Now in the city, that's probably fine. But where we are, and I'm in the town of Wilson, I understand that. But look at the subdivision to the north and to the south. Yeah, on average, you know, they might come out with a density that's bigger than 0.25 acres, but look at the number of, of quarter acre lots in that subdivision. And I'm not even, I'm really more concerned with the two lots that bought my property that are only quarter acre lots. They're just small little lots. I think it could be one huge lot. You know, it could be one half acre lot. But, um, while I am not opposed to development of the new housing in this area, I knew it was coming all along. Uh, the proposed plan, at a minimum, has to comply with the city comprehensive plan and the subdivision code, and currently, uh, this seems open to question. More importantly, though, this plan should strive for more than mere compliance and seek instead to place the preservation of this natural area at the forefront of the design, while better addressing the context of the surrounding densities. The city of Sheboygan's first subdivision without curb and gutter, correct? Is that correct? I think so. Could become the first subdivision with a dedicated natural protected sanctuary, where all residents of the area could enjoy its beauty. Now, um, from the day that it was dedicated to the city, and I think that was about 12 years ago, I always imagined this space as a protected natural area. I envisioned it with a small parking area, some walking trails, picnic tables, park benches. Included in the development would be bird feeders, bird houses, nesting areas to attract the diverse population of our birds and other wildlife, which seek protection. And this is the important part as they move through the city in a safe and secure manner. These little woodlots provide a protected area for your wildlife. It's amazing the number of different species of animals that have come through that woodland. Please have the vision. Oh no, what you already have in place, you have this at your fingertips, is a natural area, 3.5 acres. Doesn't seem like a lot of acreage, but it can be nourished to fulfill that need. Imagine, if you will, a park, very different from your common city park that we're used to seeing, a protected area with mature trees, diverse layout of land, and a sheltered area for wildlife. You already have this at your fingertips and with proper foresight can create a very special and unique neighborhood green space, a community space that will use, be used by all ages, not just the children of the subdivision, an area where all members of the subdivision can be involved in its planning, development, and use. In that way, the park will be appreciated and cared for because the people who live near it have had the direct involvement in its evolution. Please have the vision to keep your dedicated green spaces green. So 20, 30 years from now, they will still be there, okay? They will be healthier. They'll be more diverse than they were before you acquired them. Honor your sustainability plan with action now that preserves this green space for future residents of the subdivision. Um, this very unique park can be a place where the future homeowners, future homeowners of subdivision can witness nature at its best, like my wife and I have been able to do over the last 14 years. We look forward to the development to our north. We hope the plan commission will carefully look at all other options and follow the wisdom of those who 12 years ago viewed it as a valuable part of their sustainability plan. I would encourage the commission, if at all possible, to at least 
hold out an approval of phase two of this plan until they have thoroughly looked at all options. Furthermore, I would ask the developer to forward to your commission the plan that was first formulated, the one that he talked to me about, the plan that he and I talked about last summer, the plan, and, and the plan that he and I talked about two summers ago that did not intrude upon this green space. Um, I thank you for granting me the opportunity to speak, even though I'm you know, from the town of Wilson. Uh, we're very happy with what's happening in Sheboygan, and we look forward to you know, this development to our north. If you have any questions, I do have, and I, I first proposed a much longer presentation with ideas of how, um, for example, the elderly could be, would use this, this special place, how the teenage kids would use it, and how our youth would use it. I have that information if you're interested in getting it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Mark Morin. I live at 2630 Prairie Winds Court, uh, right next to John. So I live in town of Wilson uh, with my backyard to the plot. So my name is Mark Moore and I'm relatively new to the Sheboygan area. I relocated to Sheboygan for work about two years ago with my wife and two daughters, which are now 18 months and three years old. While looking for a house, I struggled finding the right home for my family. Through that experience, I could not agree more that more, more new homes are needed in the town or in Sheboygan in general. Through months of searching, we decided to build a home and I had found the perfect lot with an abundance of trees that bordered the lot. I had grown up loving to see and explore nature and it's something I want my children to enjoy. Prior to purchasing the lot, I was told by my builder that the lot was public park and I would not need to worry about anything happening to those trees. Working with Warner, I built my home of mine and my family's dreams. And we officially have lived there for about a year now. Over the last year, my daughters and I have appreciated the wooded park daily. My little 18 month year old Lily runs to the window in the evening looking for deer and every so often she sees one and screams with joy as they walk through our yard. My older daughter, Emma, three years old, loves to walk through the woods, always asking about plants and trees. It is in this park she saw her very first painted turtle and wild turkey. The grove of trees is more to my little girls than just a pretty background. It is a chance for them to learn about the circle of life, the importance of caring for nature, getting out away from technology, and just for 30 minutes, hearing the leaves in the wind and getting dirty looking for grubs and worms. Yes, there are dying ash trees in that grove, but there's also so much more life in there as well. The irony is not lost with me that the same company that informed me that my girls can grow up with public land in our backyard is the same company that is now trying to acquire this land back for private lots. When I discussed this with my frustration with Warner, they directed me to come talk with you. So here I am. No, I don't view Warner as evil or the enemy, quite the contrary. I had a great experience working with them, and I believe they add a great value to Sheboygan. I just feel there's a better way to optimize this land versus parceling it off and making it private property where only a few homes can appreciate this nature in their backyard. My ideal hope is that all 3.5 acres can be saved as public park for all families in this new subdivision where they can walk from their house to the wooded park of endless imagination. A chance to step away from all the hustle and bustle and enjoy nature at its finest, regardless of age. Yes, there's Kohler Andre State Park that's close, but that park is not walkable, and this one is, for all the entire subdivision. At a minimum, I ask that the city consider keeping some of the grove as a park and creating a walking path through the trees, so there's still some public land where families can enjoy nature versus just a select few. One idea I had is that uh, you could have a path starting at the retention pond that Warner's gonna be building and continuing following south and east of the border and it'll open up at Rim Rock Road. So it'd be that perimeter. Um, this would have a minimal impact in the current design of the lots while still finding a way to preserve some of this nature. I believe it could be a non-zero sum game where everybody can win. I've had the privilege of being part of Leadership Sheboygan County this year where I've learned all about the fantastic offerings of Sheboygan has and know some or all of the park would be another unique way 
for Sheboygan to offer something unique and pretty cool, I think. Um, I'm not only here for my two little girls, but I'm also here for the children and families that will have an opportunity in the future to have a public forest in their subdivision filled with wildlife, nature, and boundless exploration. And I ask that you reconsider the fate of this park. If physical labor is needed to improve the forest, I will be the first to sign up. I absolutely love that park as well, and I know there's a lot of other people that volunteer. But leverage my energy and excitement and make this lasting impact to Sheboygan. I hope that I was able to adequately articulate how valuable of an asset this grove of trees is, and I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else wish to speak? If so, please come up to the microphone. Does anyone else wish to speak? So this is the intent of this is a public hearing. This is your opportunity to speak on this issue. Does anybody else wish to speak? Okay, seeing no other speakers, uh, I'll entertain a motion to close the uh, public hearing. So motion and a second, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries. The next meeting date is February 25th uh, at the Municipal Services Building, uh, at which time there will be one more public hearing uh, and then a recommendation uh, from the Board of Marina, Parks, and Forestry. Is there a motion to adjourn? And a second? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much for coming.